So in this part, we're going to learn about vitamin C. Uh, what is the importance of vitamin C? Uh, how it is so essential to have vitamin C for absorption of many minerals, especially iron. Uh, and we're also going to learn about uh, vitamin C rich raw recipes and cooked recipes. Obviously with cooking, your vitamin C will uh, kind of degrade. So uh, just it's important to have uh, kind of uh, vitamin C coming from food which are raw you know so uh, what I recommend is to always have uh, lemon or lime you know uh, and just use it in your dal and vegetables and whatever uh, you know food that you've made uh, and that will give you a good amount of vitamin C but there are other things like uh, you know uh, chilies are very high in vitamin C you know of course uh, some of these fruits are high in vitamin C you know uh, but most essential thing is whenever you eat any food which is high in iron uh, especially iron uh, coming from vegetarian food you know those are non-heme iron okay and with that kind of uh, food you need to have vitamin c in it uh, because when you have vitamin c the absorption of iron will be very uh, very good okay so do watch this tutorial and uh, kind of make sure that you know in your recipes you include a lot of this uh, vitamin c rich food okay thank you Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of iron. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of iron in our body, causes and symptoms of its deficiency, food sources of iron. Iron is required for several vital functions in the body. It is a major component of hemoglobin and myoglobin. Hemoglobin is present in red blood cells. It helps to carry oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body. Myoglobin transports and stores the oxygen in muscle cells. We require iron for growth, brain function, memory and concentration. It is also required for cell function and hormone synthesis. It aids in energy production and formation of myelin. Myelin is an insulation layer that forms around the nerves. Iron also helps in maintaining strong immunity and improving gut health. Our body has 70% of iron in red blood cells. 25% is stored as ferritin in the liver, spleen and bone marrow. 6% of iron is a component of protein. Protein is required for immune functions, metabolism and collagen synthesis. We will now learn about the causes of iron deficiency. Poor intake of iron and its poor absorption are major causes of its deficiency. Worm infestation Bacterial and viral infections are some of the other causes. Excessive blood loss during menstruation and delivery can also lead to deficiency. Lead poisoning is another factor that can cause iron deficiency. In lead poisoning, there is a decreased production of hemoglobin. Excessive destruction of the red blood cells due to malaria is also a risk factor. Iron storage in a full-term pregnant woman can meet the infant's iron requirement. This is sufficient until the infant turns 4 to 6 months. However, preterm and low birth weight babies have poor iron stores. They become deficient within the first 2 months. An iron deficient pregnant woman will transfer less iron to the fetus. Amount of iron in the brain reduces in case of intrauterine iron deficiency. It also affects the baby's brain functions. 
children and adolescents are at a higher risk of deficiency. Women of reproductive age are also at the risk. I will now tell you the causes of iron deficiency in children. The most common cause in children is inadequate intake and rapid growth. Low birth weight is another cause. Iron deficiency causes anemia. It is a condition where the iron stores in the body are depleted. This reduces the supply of iron to tissues and red blood cells. Let us understand the signs and symptoms of deficiency. Brittle nails or spoon nails are symptoms of iron deficiency. In spoon nails, the soft nails look scooped out. Pale skin and swelling of the tongue also occur due to the deficiency. Weakness, shortness of breath, headache, tiredness are other examples. Pica is also one of the symptoms of iron deficiency. Pica is an intake of inedible substances like clay or soil. In adults, iron deficiency can contribute to depression. This is because of its connection with dopamine. Dopamine is called a happy hormone which makes us feel good. Iron is required for the production of dopamine. Deficiency of iron leads to low levels of dopamine. Iron deficiency has serious effects on infants and children's health. Deficiency of iron during pregnancy can cause deficiency in the fetus. This can affect language learning and behavior in children. Altered coordination and motor function are also seen. It also causes a disruption in the development of the nervous system. Deficiency of iron inhibits the formation of myelin sheath around nerves. This can lead to hyperactivity and lack of attention in children. We will now see how anemia can be prevented in children. Delayed cord clamping at the time of birth helps to prevent deficiency. It improves the iron stores in the baby for first 6 months. This reduces the risk of iron deficiency. After 6 months, Iron-rich food should be given through complementary food. I will tell you the food sources of iron in the later part of the tutorial. I will now tell you the recommended intake of iron. Recommended dietary intake of iron per day differs for different age groups. 6 to 12 month old infants require 3 mg. 1 to 3 years old require 8 mg. For 4 to 9 years old, it is 11 to 15 mg. 10 to 15 year old boys require 16 to 22 mg. 10 to 15 year old girls require 16 to 30 mg. For adult men, it is 19 mg. For adult women, it is 29 mg. To meet these requirements, it is advised to include iron-rich food. Let us look at the food sources of iron. Dietary iron is present in two forms, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron comes from hemoglobin and myoglobin found in meat. Hence, non-vegetarian food are good sources of heme iron. For example, goat meat, chicken, goat liver and brain. Non-heme iron comes from vegetarian food. For example, legumes, grains and green leafy vegetables. Heme iron is absorbed well in the body. Non-heme iron is not absorbed well and is affected by some factors. Only 17% of it gets absorbed. Calcium and phytates present in food inhibit the absorption of non-heme iron. 
roasting, germination and fermentation helps in reducing the phytate content. Process for germination and fermentation is explained in other tutorials. Please visit our website for more details. To improve the absorption of iron, it is recommended to have vitamin C. Vitamin C helps in better absorption of iron. Non-heme iron absorption is improved when combined with heme iron. We will now see the amount of iron present in different food items. 100 grams of goat liver has around 6 milligrams of iron. 100 grams of mutton has approximately 2 milligrams. 100 grams of chicken breast has nearly 1 milligram of iron. 100 grams of spinach has approximately 2.9 milligrams. 30 grams of kidney beans have around 1.8 milligrams. Include these foods in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of vitamin C. In this tutorial, we will learn about role of vitamin C in the body, food sources of vitamin C, ways to increase vitamin C intake in our diet. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin. It plays a very important role in several body functions. It is essential for the synthesis of collagen, which acts like a cement. It holds the bones, muscles, skin and the whole body together. Tissues of our body like skin, hair, blood vessels and bones have collagen. Vitamin C helps in recovery after a muscle or skeletal injury. It helps in the healing of wounds. It is also required for maintaining healthy skin. Another role of vitamin C is that it acts as an antioxidant. Antioxidants are substances that protect our body from damage by free radicals. Free radicals are substances that are naturally produced in the body. They become harmful only when they become excessive. Pollution, smoking, alcohol, harmful chemicals increase free radicals production. This results in cancer, diabetes, heart diseases and cataract. Vitamin C reduces the formation of free radicals in the body, thus protecting our cells from damage. Vitamin C also strengthens our immune system. It helps in fighting infections and protecting against other diseases. For example, common cold, cancer and heart diseases. Vitamin C helps in bone formation. It also helps in the synthesis of a few hormones. For example, dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline. These hormones help the body respond to stress or fright. In addition, Vitamin C enhances the absorption of non-heme iron in the body. Non-heme iron is a form of iron which is mostly present in plant-based foods. For example, green leafy vegetables, seeds, nuts and beans. Consuming too little vitamin C can increase the risk of iron deficiency. This may result in anemia, which is known as iron deficiency anemia. Deficiency of vitamin C can result in scurvy. Early signs of scurvy are uneasiness, fever and fatigue. 
Other symptoms are swelling and bleeding in gums and loosening of teeth. Poor healing of wounds and bruises and bleeding on the skin is visible. Swelling and pain in the joints may also arise. The hair becomes dry and coiled. Other signs of deficiency are dry skin, mood changes and poor immunity. Iron deficiency anemia can also occur due to vitamin C deficiency. Let us now look at the daily vitamin C recommendation. For babies up to 12 months of age, 25 mg per day is recommended. For children who are 1 to 10 year old, 40 mg per day is recommended. For adolescents, 45 to 75 mg per day is recommended. For adult females, it is 75 mg. 90 mg is recommended for adult males. The requirements are higher during pregnancy and lactation. Pregnant women should have 85 mg of vitamin C per day. Lactating mothers should have 120 mg per day. Let me now tell you the food sources of vitamin C. Certain fruits and vegetables are good sources of vitamin C. Among fruits, gooseberry and guava are the richest sources. One medium-sized guava gives around 300 mg of vitamin C. One gooseberry has nearly 60 mg of vitamin C. Other examples are Bengal currant, Indian jujube and raw mango. Fruits like oranges, lemons and sweet limes are also good sources. One tablespoon of lemon juice has approximately 8 mg of vitamin C. One medium orange has about 40 mg. Even green leafy vegetables have an adequate amount of vitamin C. For example, leaves of drumstick, amaranth, radish and mustard. Fenugreek leaves and agathi leaves are other examples. 100 grams of raw green leafy vegetables have about 60 to 100 milligrams. Coriander and mint leaves also have some amount of vitamin C. Some other vegetables also have moderate amounts of vitamin C. For example, capsicum, cabbage, drumsticks, bitter gourd, tomatoes and peas. 100 grams or 2 raw tomatoes have 27 milligrams of vitamin C. There are certain factors which decrease the vitamin C content of the food. It is sensitive to heat and water. It is lost if cooked at high temperature or exposed to prolonged sunlight. Cooking in excessive water and discarding the water also results in loss. Storing food in the refrigerator for a long time reduces the vitamin C content. Thus, many of the vitamin C rich foods are best consumed raw. This way, you get the maximum amount of vitamin C from it. If they are cooked, they should be cooked on low flame for short durations. Steam or saute vegetables instead of boiling. Upon steaming, the loss of vitamin C is the least. Do not repetitively heat the food. Cook with minimum or no water. Avoid storing and refrigerating food for a long time. Let us learn some ways 
to increase our daily intake of vitamin C. Eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Pick the raw fruits as they have more vitamin C. Try having a food source of vitamin C with every meal. With your meals, you can have mint, curry leaf or coriander dips. Lemon juice can be sprinkled on your food. Garnish your meals with coriander leaves or mint leaves after cooking. You can also increase the vitamin C content of your food by sprouting. As much as possible, include sprouted beans in your diet. All these methods will ensure that we get adequate vitamin C from our diet. Adequate intake of vitamin C is necessary for our good health. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vitamin C rich cooked recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn about ways to avoid the loss of vitamin C from food, preparation of some vitamin C rich cooked recipes. We will first understand what is vitamin C and its role in the body. Vitamin C is an important water soluble vitamin. It is required for various functions in the body. For example, healing wounds and maintaining healthy skin. It also helps in fighting infections and other diseases. Additionally, vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron in the body. Hence, adequate intake of vitamin C rich food in our daily diet is essential. Gooseberries, guavas and Citrus fruits are excellent sources of vitamin C. Green leafy vegetables and other vegetables are additional sources. I will now tell you ways to avoid loss of vitamin C from food. It is to be noted that vitamin C is sensitive to heat and water. Cooking at high temperatures will destroy some amount of vitamin C in the food. Cooking in excess water and throwing that water causes a loss too. Thus, some points should be remembered while cooking vitamin C rich food. Do not overcook the food. Cook in minimum amounts of water. Do not discard the water after cooking. Avoid repetitive heating of food. Steam or saute the vegetables instead of boiling them. However, if boiling is required, then use the water for some other preparation. Do not throw it away. You may use the water for kneading a dough. You can also add it in curries and soups. Let us now look at the preparation of some vitamin C rich recipes. Our first recipe is stir fry gova. To prepare this recipe, you need 150 grams or 1 semi ripe gova, half lemon, half teaspoon cumin seeds, 1 by 4 teaspoon red chili powder, 1 by 4 teaspoon coriander powder, 2 to 3 curry leaves, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. Use salt as per your taste. Procedure Wash the gova and cut it into small pieces. Heat oil in a pan. Add cumin seeds and curry leaves. When they start to crackle, add the chopped guava pieces. Add red chili powder coriander powder and salt. Mix everything well and saute for 2 to 3 minutes on medium flame. Switch off the flame and squeeze some lemon juice. 
sauteed guava is ready. One bowl of this recipe will give around 300 milligrams of vitamin C. Our next recipe is drumstick curry. For this recipe, you need 75 grams or 2 drumsticks, 2 tomatoes, half onion, half teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 1 fourth teaspoon cumin seeds. The spices needed are 1 fourth teaspoon red chili powder, 1 fourth teaspoon coriander powder, 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder. You will also require 2 teaspoons of oil or ghee and salt to taste. Procedure Wash the drumsticks thoroughly. Cut it into pieces. Remove the peel. Steam the drumsticks in a steamer. If you do not have a steamer, fill one fourth of a cooking pot with water. Place a stand in it and keep a plate of drumsticks on the stand. Cover the pot and steam on medium flame for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, grind onion and tomatoes in a mixer to make a smooth paste. Heat oil in a pan and add cumin seeds and ginger garlic paste. Once they start to crackle, add the onion tomato paste to it and stir it well. Then add red chilli powder, turmeric powder, coriander powder and salt. Cook for 3 to 5 minutes. Next add the steamed drumstick pieces. Add 1 fourth cup of water and cover the pan. Cook for 2 minutes on medium flame. Drumstick curry is ready. One bowl of this recipe gives about 140 mg of vitamin C. The third recipe is Amaranth Leaves Curry. Ingredients required to prepare this recipe are 60 grams or 1 fourth bundle of red amaranth leaves, 1 teaspoon grated gooseberry, half cup roasted gram flour, 1 small onion, 2 small tomatoes, other ingredients required are half teaspoon ginger garlic paste, one green chili, one fourth cup coriander leaves. The spices needed are half teaspoon red chili powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, one fourth teaspoon turmeric powder. You also need salt to taste and one tablespoon of ghee or oil. Procedure Wash the amaranth leaves thoroughly and chop them. Take the chopped amaranth leaves in a bowl. Add salt, red chilli powder, chopped green chilli and grated gooseberry. Then add ginger garlic paste and roasted gram flour. Mix everything well. If required, you can add 1 to 2 tablespoon of water to bind the mixture. Make long rolls of this mixture. Steam the rolls on medium flame for 10 to 15 minutes. The procedure for steaming has been explained earlier in this tutorial. After steaming, keep the rolls aside and let them cool. Cut the rolls into medium slices. Meanwhile, grind the tomatoes in the mixer to make a smooth puree. Next, heat oil or ghee in a pan. Add chopped onions and saute it. Add turmeric powder, red chilli powder and coriander powder. Mix well and then add the tomato puree. Let it cook on low flame for 3 to 5 minutes. Add the slices of amaranth leaves rolls and mix well. Cover the lid and cook for 1 to 2 minutes and switch off the flame. Garnish with washed and chopped coriander leaves. 
वन बोल ऑफ दिस रेसिपी गिवस अबाउट नाइंटी एट मिलीग्राम्स ऑफ वाइटमिन सी द लास्ट रेसिपी इज रॉ मैंगो एंड स्प्लिट बंगाल ग्राम चटनी फॉर दिस रेसिपी यू नीड थ्री टेबल स्पून ऑफ स्प्लिट बंगाल ग्राम हाफ और सिक्सटी ग्राम्स ऑफ रॉ मैंगो हाफ टमेटो वन टी स्पून ग्रेटेड गूसबेरी वन ग्रीन चिली वन फोर्थ कप और अ हैंड फुल ऑफ कोरियांडर लीव्स वन फोर्थ टी स्पून मस्टर्ड सीड्स यूज सॉल्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू योर टेस्ट यू विल ऑल्सो नीड वन टेबल स्पून ऑफ ऑयल और घी प्रोसीजर वॉश एंड सोक द स्प्लिट बंगाल ग्राम इन वॉटर फॉर फोर टू सिक्स आवर्स देन ग्राइंड इट अलॉन्ग विद ग्रीन चिली coarsely in a mixer or a stone grinder next heat oil or ghee in a pan and add mustard seeds once they start to crackle add the coarse paste mix it well and let it cook on medium flame for 2 to 3 minutes switch off the flame and remove it in a bowl add grated raw mango and gooseberry to it then add chopped tomatoes along with washed and chopped coriander leaves you can have this along with your meals 2 tablespoons of this recipe will give about 40 mg of vitamin c note that vitamin c content of all these recipes is based on raw edible portions ensure adequate intake of vitamin c rich food in your diet for good health also remember the key points to avoid the loss of vitamin c from food this brings us to the end of the tutorial Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vitamin C rich uncooked recipes. This tutorial is about the preparation of some vitamin C rich recipes. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. It plays a very important role in several body functions. It is required for healing of wounds and maintaining a healthy skin. It helps in fighting infections and other diseases. Vitamin C also enhances the absorption of iron in the body. Deficiency of vitamin C can result in scurvy, fatigue, low immunity, etc. So, adequate intake of vitamin C rich food in our daily diet is essential. Vitamin C is present in most of the fruits and vegetables citrus fruits and gooseberry are excellent sources of vitamin c however it gets easily destroyed by heat for maximum benefit it is best to take vitamin c rich food raw in this tutorial i will teach you some uncooked vitamin c rich recipes Cooked vitamin C rich recipes will be explained in another tutorial. The first recipe we will see is guava chutney. To prepare this recipe, you will need 50 g or half guava, half cup or a handful of washed coriander leaves, 3 green chilies, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half lemon, salt to taste. procedure cut the guava into small pieces grind all the ingredients in the mixer along with the lemon juice you can add a little water to make a smooth paste guava chutney is ready 1/4 cup of this chutney will have about 110 mg of vitamin c this chutney can also be made with other vitamin c rich fruits For example, gooseberry, raw mango, karwanda, raw papaya, etc. Our second recipe is 
raw mango and peanut salad. For this you need 50 grams or one small raw mango, one gooseberry, one tomato, one fourth cup or a handful of roasted peanuts, half cup or a handful of washed coriander leaves, one lemon, one green chili. Add salt according to your taste. Procedure Wash, peel and deseed the raw mango. Finely chop the raw mango, gooseberry and tomato. In a bowl, take the chopped raw mango, gooseberry and tomato. Add peanuts, green chilli and salt. Squeeze one lemon into it and mix well. Raw mango and peanut salad is ready. One bowl of this salad gives approximately 77 mg of vitamin C. Our next recipe is baby fenugreek leaf salad. For this you need 75 grams or 3 to 4 bundles of baby fenugreek leaves, 1 tablespoon fresh coconut, 1 tablespoon small yellow lentils, half tomato, 1 green chili, half lemon. You also need salt to taste. Procedure Soak small yellow lentils in water overnight. Cut 1 inch of roots of the baby fenugreek leaves and discard them. Wash the fenugreek leaves thoroughly. Place them on a clean cloth. This will absorb all the excess water from the leaves. Chop the leaves and put them in a bowl. Add chopped tomatoes and green chilli. Then add chopped coconut and soaked small yellow lentils. To this add salt and lemon juice. Crush it coarsely using a mortar and pestle. Baby fenugreek leaves salad is ready. One bowl of this salad will give around 70 mg of vitamin C. Our next recipe is gooseberry pickle. To prepare this you need 1 gooseberry, 2 to 3 green chilies, half cup or a handful of washed coriander leaves, 1 to 2 cloves of garlic, salt to taste. Procedure Deseed the gooseberry and chop it. Chop the chilies and coriander leaves. Add salt. Crush all the ingredients coarsely in a mortar and pestle. Gooseberry pickle is ready. It can be taken 1 to 2 times a day with your meals. 2 tablespoon of this pickle has about 88 mg of vitamin C. Moving on to our last recipe which is cabbage salad. To prepare this salad you need 100 grams or 1 fourth cabbage, half tomato, half cup or a handful of washed coriander leaves, 1 green chilli, 1 lemon, 1 tablespoon of roasted and crushed peanuts. You will also need half teaspoon dry mango powder and salt to taste. Procedure Shred or chop the cabbage finely. Chop the tomato also. Take the chopped cabbage, tomato, coriander leaves and green chilli in a bowl. Next, add the roasted and crushed peanuts. Now, add salt and dry mango powder. Mix everything well. Squeeze a lemon on top. Cabbage salad is ready. One bowl of this salad will give about 60 mg of vitamin C. All these recipes have a good amount of vitamin C. Try to include vitamin C rich food in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for joining.